Sam Altman is going after AI agents. This was posted on The Information. OpenAI shifts AI battleground to software that operates devices and automates tasks. So OpenAI is developing a form of agent software to automate complex tasks by effectively taking over a customer's device. So we've seen a number of these things popping up, the Rabbit R1 device. We've seen Multion, this browser add-on or plugin that can do a lot of these tasks for you. There are many, many more, and a lot of different people are building various software that is able to do this. Sometime around Easter, the Rabbit R1 device is supposed to ship out to people, the first sort of, you know, standalone device that's going to have these AI agents. And it looks like Mr. Sam Altman is hot on the Rabbit's tail to create their own version of this AI agent hardware device. So the customer could ask the chat GPT agent to transfer data from a document to a spreadsheet for analysis, for instance, or to automatically fill out expense reports and enter into accounting software. Those kinds of requests would trigger the agent to perform the clicks, cursor movements, text typing, and other actions humans take as they work with different apps. And so they're saying that this sort of software is just one of two types of agents that OpenAI is developing. The second type of agent is, or another class of AI agent, something that would be able to handle web-based tasks. And Google and Meta have said that they're developing similar types of agents. A lot of this is powered by LLMs, so things like ChatGPT, Gemini, et cetera, plus vision, its ability to see images and sort of figure out what's happening on them. The Rabbit device is doing something different. They're calling it a LAM, a large action model. So they're, they're having a little bit of a different approach to it. And so these agents would allow OpenAI to create, as Sam Altman calls them, a super smart personal assistant for work. And some at OpenAI also view them to be a some sort of an operating system. This is what Andre Karpathy repeatedly said. He said people think of these things as these chatbots that you know you talk back and forth with. But a better sort of way of thinking about what these AIs are, they're an operating system, like Windows is an operating system. But instead of like typing or clicking on things and dragging icons, et cetera, you tell the AI what you want done, and then it executes on those commands. So it's kind of like having your own personal agent that you give a task and it kind of autonomously goes and tries to complete those tasks, breaks them down into chunks, into various sub goals, and then tries to complete those sub goals one at a time. So some of these products have been in development for over a year at OpenAI specifically. And there was this tweet by Ben Newhouse. I saw it the other day. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to cover it in any of my videos, but it seemed very, very interesting. So this is Ben Newhouse. And so he's currently at OpenAI and he posted this thing. So he's saying, I'm hiring at OpenAI. We're building what I think could be an industry defining zero to one product that leverages the latest and greatest from our upcoming models. If you like product, deep technical challenges and writing the future, my DMs are open. So zero to one here, I think what he's referring to is a term coined by Peter Thiel, this, this guy right here, who, by the way, is funding the Enhanced Olympics, basically a version of Olympics and various sports that would actually allow the competitors, the athletes to use various enhancing drugs and techniques, et cetera, for what I think is basically two reasons. One, it's going to be very entertaining, I think. And two, I think it is going to allow more scientific research and more light to shine on what these athletes are doing. Because a lot of them are doing something, many things, but it's all hush hush. It's all very, very secret. And potentially getting it out in the open, having it be studied could potentially, I think, help progress science and also maybe even make it safer because it doesn't have to be sort of cloak and dagger. It doesn't have to be hidden from sight. It can be researched. But the idea of zero to one is basically creating something that is brand new, opening up a brand new market. Peter Thiel has talked that he's a big fan of monopolies. He likes the idea of creating something brand new that no one else has discovered and controlling that thing. And the other people that are shown in this image, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, who I, I believe will be taking part in the Enhanced Olympics as an athlete, I'm, I'm totally kidding. But all those people are an example of creating their own sort of market, being a monopoly by creating products that have not existed before, market defining products. And so this is what Ben House is talking about here, I think. Now, I'm guessing, of course, because, you know, a lot of the stuff isn't like publicly out there. But, you know, he's saying we're building what I think what he thinks could be an industry defining zero to one product that leverages the latest and greatest from our upcoming models. And while opening, I haven't really talked too much about what will be in the latest and greatest models. I mean, they've dropped some hints. They spoke kind of vaguely about it, not too many specifics. So what we believe we're going to see, first of all, multimodality. So sort of any input, any output. So whether that's video, text, voice, images in and also out. So be able to upload an image and have it describe the image 
be able to upload a video, speak into your phone so that it's able to understand it and it able to output those things. So sort of multimodality in and out. But also what a lot of people believe, myself included, is that they're working very hard on creating these autonomous AI agents. OpenAI has often talked about, I, I forget the specific wording that they use, but kind of like staggering their releases or releasing these big technologies incrementally and giving people enough time to sort of adjust and get used to these technologies before the next big thing rolls out. And in November at the OpenAI Developers Conference, the big announcements were custom GPTs and the Assistance API, which gave us this ability to kind of tap into this AI powered automation, but not quite fully autonomous agents. In fact, there seems to be like specific safeguards that don't allow this thing to just keep running. But what I believe is going to happen is that by the next developer conference, by the end of the year, probably at the latest, we're going to see more of these autonomous agents emerge out of OpenAI. And so when they're talking about an industry defining zero to one product that leverages the latest and greatest from the upcoming models, I mean, we were saying back in November that it's probably going to be these autonomous agents. And like these leaks, this article kind of seems to be supporting that. And then Peter Wellender, OpenAI's vice president of product, said that this new zero to one product will change everything. Now, when we're going to see that is not determined yet. We're not quite sure. A lot of people are speculating that once Google releases its most powerful model, the Gemini Ultra, that will be kind of the signal for OpenAI to unveil its next big thing. And Google just released Gemini Ultra, or at least it incorporated into Bard, which they've renamed to be called Gemini Advanced. So now Bard is gone and we have Gemini, which by default uses Gemini Pro. But if you upgrade to the Gemini Advanced, then you will be using Gemini Ultra 1.0 which is not confusing at all, right? And so even Google CEO Sundar Pichai said the latest technology allows us to act more like an agent over time. So if you recall that paper, attention is all you need. So this is the big one from Google that created the transformer in 2017. And this is what in large part set off this AI wave. This was one of the key technologies that really helped create what we have today. And so there was eight people on that paper, I believe. And I think almost all of them ended up leaving Google and creating their own startups. You know, Character AI, some went to OpenAI, Cohere, Near Incorporated, Inceptive, and a few went to Adept. Adept is creating their own sort of model that is capable of acting like an autonomous agent. You might have heard of it, Fuyu Heavy. We very briefly, I believe, covered it in one of the videos. And so they're saying Adept is building an entirely new way to get things done, takes your goals in plain language, so in English or whatever language you speak, and turns them into actions that the software does for you. And their model is the Act 1, so it can create profit and loss columns for last quarter, set reminders, find a refrigerator for under a thousand, etc. And they're raising tons of money. In less than a year, it raised hundreds of millions total. I think they're going to be, their valuation is going to be over a billion soon. They raised 65 million from Greylock and addition, I think NVIDIA is one of the investors. So Adept lined up strategic investors like Microsoft, NVIDIA, Atlassian, and Workday. And there are many, many other players in the space that are trying to build this technology. Imbue is one of them. They raised 200 million to build AI systems that can reason and code. HyperWrite is one more that we've tested out. So we've tried both their sort of regular thing that can use desktop. We've also tried the Chrome plugin. I was very impressed with the Chrome plugin, how well it was able to execute everything. Since then, I believe just recently, they've added an ability to teach the AI agents how to do certain tasks. So that if it's uh, struggling to complete something, you can go in there and kind of like nudge it along. And just a few days ago, I've covered Multion on this channel, which so far from everything I tried and everything that I've seen, that one is like just the most mind blowing, the most advanced. But take that with a grain of salt because that will likely change very quickly. There might be something out right now that's that's better. It's just this is the one that I really saw that I was like, okay, we're we're like so close. We're so close. We're almost there to having these autonomous AI agents. It's able to tweet for me. It's able to go do research, memorize various uh, articles, you know, write them down in a notepad. It's able to, for example, go on Instacart and order a bunch of stuff for you. I told it to cancel my auto replenishment orders on Amazon and it just, it just goes ahead and does that. Now it still runs into issues, but I think most of those issues are are caused by, you know, their, their, their tech issues and how it interacts with the various elements through Chrome, stuff like that. So they're not really, the, the agent seems to be very capable at making decisions and finding the right things to click. And if it runs into an issue, how to keep thinking about, you know, trying different approaches and stuff like that, like it's getting really good at that. And when it can't do something, it seems like because it's a limitation of the browser, not necessarily of the agent or a limitation of how the, the, the agent can interact with the browser. And the development team behind Multion is 
I got I got to give them props. They're they're legit because in the video, if you saw it, I had a very difficult time. The thing that I had the most trouble with is getting it to interact with Discord to create a mid journey image. And it looks like today at two a.m., so less than forty eight hours, I think after that video, they they fixed it. They were they figured out how to add it to their latest version. So these guys are not messing around. And I swear that I'm not just buttering them up because they're posting my videos in their Discord channel. I mean that helps, but even without that, this is a pretty cool example of what's possible. I said it was surprisingly good and you can see that in video when it starts executing this stuff. It was weird because when I was rewatching that video for editing, I was like, whoa, like I, d I did really seem surprised. Like, whoa, like it did all of that. And I wasn't the only one. So this is one of the guys on the All In podcast. So here's his first sort of reaction to Multion. And, uh, oh. you know, it, it, it can read it to you and it's good. It's, it's been <laughs> but like, yes. Holy cow. <laughs> that was kind of my reaction as well. And so for people that have been following this channel for a while, you know that I've been kind of like banging this drum since since early last year, that like this is the next wave. This is the form that AI, AGI will take. It's going to be the form of agents. And now it's really hitting the mainstream more and more. It's getting more and more coverage. Now you're seeing Google begin to use that language. Microsoft begin to use that language. So say, saying agents, autonomous agents, we're seeing OpenAI going after it. We're seeing the first consumer devices, the first consumer hardware like Rabbit R1 hitting, you know, the store shelves in, in April, or at least being shipped out to the early backers, or, or at least that's what they're, they're promising. A lot of different people are, are, are building their own various approaches to this thing. This is A16Z. So this is their consumer abundance agenda. So this is the things that they're saying like, hey, we're, we want to invest in this. So A16Z is this big, very successful venture capital firm, deals in technology, and now more and more is focusing on AI. They're kind of like the tech insider guys. And so one of the things that they're looking for is this, agents that act as systems of action. So we expect to see general agents that can complete common consumer tasks like booking a restaurant or finding and sending a gift to a friend or having them be specialized agents for you know specific and complex tasks, data analysis, marketing automation, et cetera. And so they list a few examples on here, Multion being one of them. And so this is going to be like that first wave of, you know, for example, little plugins for Chrome that can complete tasks for you or devices that can complete tasks for you. And that's going to be cool. And that's going to be awesome. But I think the really important thing to understand here is what's going to come right after that. Not very long ago, October 2023. So this is Microsoft Corporation and they're exploring the GPT-4 with Vision, GPT-4B. We've covered this in a video earlier, but there's one thing that I just want to quickly highlight and that is this. So they unleashed a GPT-4 with Vision on completing certain web-based tasks, but it wasn't like a plugin that directly interacted with the website. They tried to replicate how it would go about finding certain things, doing certain things online, like reading the news, doing online shopping, you know, researching various keyboards or whatever on Amazon, you know, going and using the checkout to, to purchase that keyboard and a bunch of stuff like that, watching videos and trying to understand what that video is, is saying, but it was doing it in the same way that a human being would. So using the mouse to find the symbols on the screen that you're going to click on using the keyboard to type in various things. And, you know, it was showing promise. There were, you know, problems. It, it sometimes clicked the wrong things. It couldn't quite understand how to get through it. And these new agents that we just discussed, a lot of them use plugins because, and, and they're much more effective at using plugins because instead of looking at the screen, trying to figure out where the icons are and being confused, they just go directly, you know, I mean, they're kind of interacting with the code, with the HTML on the, on the site, instead of looking at the screen like a human being would. And those are getting really, really good. So the next wave is these same agents, but without the limitations of needing to have that plugin, but rather be able to interact with the desktop or the phone or whatever, just like you and I would by tapping on the icon, by clicking on things, etc. That I think is the thing that no one's ready for. Whoever creates the first one of those, you know, is obviously going to do extremely well, but think through the implications of that. Think about how many people all over the world right now, you know, 90% of the, their work tasks are done with a keyboard and mouse. What happens when these agents get as good as your average human at interacting with a computer? It changes how work is done. It changes how like the whole advertising ecosystem online kind of gets upended because now we can disable, you know, bot traffic or at least try to filter large chunks of it. We can kind of see because it behaves differently from a human being that's navigating the web. That's out the window. I've spent the last decade plus working online, oftentimes hiring people all across the world that, that I never see in real life. We communicate through chat and email and stuff like that. 
I tell them what needs to get done. And then later they come back and they send me the results. And over the last decade, like I knew there was a human being on the other end of that doing that work and communicating with me. Five years from now, that might be a coin toss. Could be 50-50, could be, could be Chad GPT doing all of that. So I've been saying this for a while and I'll say it again. This is the space to watch. The autonomous AI agent space, that's the thing that is its like final form, let's say. That is the thing that's going to have the biggest impact for everyone everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in tech or not. It doesn't matter if you're trying to build one of these things or not. Whatever you do for a living, having autonomous AI agents help you be more productive, complete tasks on your behalf will fundamentally change how this whole game is played. Sam Altman the other day said that he and other CEOs that he chats with, they kind of have this betting pool to see when the first one person, billion dollar company will be created. So they believe that soon they're going to see a company that is valued at a billion dollars that will have only one person, one human that's working in it. And various AI technologies like these AI agents handle the bulk of the actual work. So my point is, pay attention. This whole thing is unfolding kind of more or less exactly how it was predicted. Make sure you're subscribed because we're going to be talking about this a lot. It has been probably one of the main themes of this channel. And whether you're building something in the AI space, or you have some other business that you want to empower with AI, or you're doing something completely different and you just want the productivity boost that comes from AI, it, it doesn't really matter. The point is, in the near future, as these things roll out into the world, things will change. I've said this before. I think that in the long Long term, this will bring abundance, prosperity, peace, harmony, like a lot of good things. Like it will in generally in the long term be a force for good. I do believe that. In the sort of short and medium term, things may get bumpy. There might be chaos. And you know what chaos is? Chaos is a ladder. I'm only partly kidding. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.